We hope, you know, to, to level everyone out because we have Mama Doc here, Wendy Sue Swanson. Thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah. good yeah. to be here. A lot of topics today, but one yep. involving lawnmowers and actually found surprising. Mm -hmm. And then also one dealing with just the 4th of July and safety. Here we are. A reality Yay. check for yeah. you on these topics. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Well, kids are out of school and it's clearly the season for yard work. In the U.S., more than 9,000 kids go to the emergency room for lawnmower related injuries every single year. And the most common are those little guys. Three to 16. To help prevent this, here's some rules. Don't let kids push a lawnmower on their own until age 12. Nice to think you're a nine-year-old, but don't do it. And don't let them on that rider mower until they're 16. And then, of course, make sure they're wearing that eye protection and those closed-toed shoes. Real deal injuries. Number three, the American Academy of Pediatrics urges families not to buy fireworks for their own kids as thousands of people, most often, kids and teens are injured when using them and consumer fireworks. But Number four, did you know that sparklers can reach temperatures of 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit? So here's the breakdown showing which fireworks lead to the most injuries, 19%. So one in five injuries from a firework is a sparkler. So don't think of those as just super minor, minor. Now, lots of these injuries are burn, and the most injured part of the body, if you look at that, is on those hands, of course, and not that surprising. So hands and fingers, big risk. Those sparklers are not as benign as you may think, 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So good information to keep in mind as you plan your 4th of July celebrations, of course, in just two days. But it kind of starts even before that usually, too. Right. Yeah, it was interesting when I heard about the lawnmower statistic this morning. I was like, really? Like, that's a, yeah. I didn't realize that many kids were impacted. It by seems it. like a dopey reminder, but the American Academy of Pediatrics pushes out all this content mm -hmm. because we just kind of forget that things can go flying, and it's those horrible injuries to feet that come from those propeller blades underneath lawnmowers, too. Yeah. Those young kids who cringe. just don't get it. Yeah, no. it's really hard to think about. Ooh. Yeah, we wanted to ask you because I saw on Twitter recently you were basically trying to get some movement towards being able to help with the kids being detained at the border. There's the tweet yeah. there. Yeah. Um, tell us what what, how this came about here for you? Well, you know, I think a lot of us in pediatricians have been communicating on back channels. So listservs, back channels of Twitter, or Facebook, anything that we can do to try to get together and think of, you know, we, our job is advocating for children. We certainly know that toxic stress or what are called adverse childhood events early in life mm -hmm. cause lifelong trauma and mm -hmm. injury. It's a lot harder to, you know, heal a broken man than it is to raise and protect young children. And so pediatricians are trying to organize, but as you know from the news, they're getting pushed away. So, you know, I'm a bilingual, I speak Spanish, I taught bilingual oh, wow. education after I went to, uh, before I went to medical school and kind of raising my hand, I'm taking a bunch of time off of work in July and I'm like, I'm ready to go. You should be down there. Right. But no one's okay. accepting us. There have been a couple calls to action. So we have organized through Twitter. So there are lots of pediatricians on Twitter, over 675. And we've been organizing, trying to get together of how can we go to the border. If I'm a board certified pediatrician, if I'm allowed to see kids, it's kind of like, can the government use that board certification as ways to even just intervene to take care of children, try to actually calm them down. And reduce the trauma, yeah. And reduce that trauma. We know, you know, kids change their sleeping, their eating, and have long-term changes in depression and anxiety after some of these adverse childhood events. And that is something like separating a child from their parent in a time of complete disarray. So as we get these kids back together that have been separated, I think pediatricians are going to continue to raise their hand. If you have ideas for me, feel free to text them. Yeah. Um, and I'll try to get them out on Twitter and get them out to other pediatricians as well. Because people are trying to get down, but often many of us are turned away. Oh my goodness. Sad. Yeah. Well, keep yeah. us posted, okay? I will. And let everyone, you know, again. Seattle Mama Doc yeah. on Twitter, you can find me, and I'd love to help, but not really about me. I mean, it's kind of anyone who wants to help. If I can help connect someone, I'm certainly willing to do what my part. Okay. We all will. All right. Well, thank you so much for dropping by. Yeah. Right. Nice to be here.